hi how are you doing welcome to another video and in this video we'll be uh, discussing applications of differentiation uh, there are quite a number of applications of differentiation but we'll concentrate on two and the first one will be uh, small changes small changes or errors how can we find changes or errors now and we are going to do this with using examples and the first one we are going to look at is a diploma in electrical engineering and one paper the volume of a cone or not write down the whole question that's why, that's why sometimes i give you the question so that if you want to refer something you can check the volume of a cone of radius r and height h are given by volume of a cone is given by v is equal to uh, a third pi r squared h if radius decreases by one percent radius decreases by one percent and height increases by uh, by three percent we are told five percentage change in volume using partial differentiation five percentage change in volume Uh, using partial differentiation. So how do we go about this? You see, volume over there is a function of radius and h height. Uh, in partial differentiation, change in the dependent variable v is given by partial derivative of the volume with respect to the first variable r times change in r plus partial derivative of volume with respect to the height times change in height change in height now uh, change in r is equal to decreases by one percent is a change of the original radius by one percent so it's one of one hundred of of the original radius r which is equal to negative one negative r out of one hundred change in height is equal to increases by three percent increases by three of one hundred of the original height, height h which is equal to 3h of 100 partial derivative of the volume with respect to r you differentiate volume what about the expression for volume volume is equal to a third pi r squared height so partial derivative of v with respect to the radius r is 2 over 3 yeah because you are dif differentiating with respect to r pi r h change in volume with respect to height is are differentiating volume with respect to height. So if you differentiate here with respect to height, it will disappear. We are that I r squared now without the h. That now change in volume is equal to partial derivative volume with respect to r 
a dad, not a dad, but two of a dream. I R H times change in radius. There are the bar of one hundred. Thus, partial derivative of volume with respect to height, which is a dad. I R squared times change in height, which is three of one hundred. Now this becomes change in volume is this negative here two of negative two pi over three pi R. These are what rights with these are pi R squared H. Plus these three multiplies with these three here, three over three, pi r squared. But this h multiplies here, h. Okay. Here you have this one hundred, so it can divide here. One hundred, and here you have this one hundred, so it can divide here. This one hundred. So that change in volume is negative two over three. Okay, why don't we factor out um, pi r squared h pi r pi r squared h pi r squared h to be negative two over three hundred um, plus three over. Three hundred, which is pi r squared h. This should be one over ah three hundred. If we factor out a third, is a third pi r squared h times one over one hundred. So. The change in volume is one hundred, a hundredth, a hundredth of the original volume, and this one is positive. So volume increases by one percent. Volume increases. By one percent. Let us attempt another one. We are told this is question seven B. Time of oscillation t of a pendulum is given by time of oscillation t. Of a pendulum is given by two pi root length over gravity. Use partial differentiation to determine percentage change in t. Use partial differentiation. Uh, to determine percentage change in t if r is increasing by zero point three percent. R G is decreasing at 0.2 percent. Here you can see time of oscillation is a function of length and acceleration due to gravity. If you have an oscillating spring.
the time it takes to swing around is governed by the length and the acceleration due to due to gravity. Change in time of oscillation can be given by major derivative of time with respect to length times change in length plus partial derivative plus partial derivative of time with respect to uh, with respect to g times change in g here change in length length is increasing by 0.3% 0.3 percent or 0.3 of out of 100 of the original length is 0.3 r of 100 change in the gravity is equal to decreasing by 0.2 so it is negative 0.2 out of 100 of the original gravity which is negative 0 0.2 g out of 100 now time itself is 2 pi uh, r per half over g to power a half which means partial derivative of time with respect to length see here it is 2 times a half pi r to power negative 1 this is a constant g to power a half which is pi this now r to power a half g to power a half. If you want to can say this is pi over uh, let, us, let us just read it like that for the purposes of working. Now change in time with respect to gravity. We differentiate this with respect to g. I wish you could say t 2 pi r a half g to power negative a half. Just using reciprocal, we can manage to organize things to our, to our convenience. So, partial derivative of time with respect to g is equal to 2. If you multiply, you multiply with the old power, which is negative a half. L power half, we are not touching L because it's not now a variable of consideration. G, what do you do when you are uh, differentiating? You usually subtract a one. A half minus one, this is the same as two over two, negative three over two. So the new power now will be negative three over two. The same as saying, oh, here there is pi, put pi here, pi, negative two, two times negative half, negative pi, r power half, g to power three over two. So that now, uh, change in time is equal to derivative of time with respect to r pi l to power a half g to power a half times change in r 0 0.2 out of 100 r plus partial derivative of Time with respect to G, time with respect to G, 
So this one will be a negative now because this is a negative. negative. Pi n per half g to the power 3, 3 over 2 times uh, changing um, gravity 0 0.2 g out of 100. How do you do multiplication? Now this is, see here, this pi, you have a half here, it's like you are saying r, r to power a half. The same as r to power 1 minus a half. You take this up, r to power a half. Pi, r to power a half, g to power a half. Here you have 0 0.2 0 0.2 pi l per a half g to per a half 0 0.2 of 100 this one I'll take over here minus 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 plus this G on the denominator, G power negative 3 over 2, the G, this one on the numerator, 1. So this is G, negative 3 over 2, plus 1, G to power negative a half. So, uh, pi, L to power a half, G to power uh, negative a half. Well, I think I made a mistake here. This is 0 0.3 R. For R is 0 0.3, not 0 0.2. Uh, R is 0 0.3. Then, uh, there is no other mistake. R is 0 0.3. Times 0 0.2 all over. How you want to rewrite this is pi l to power a half g to power a half times 0 0.3 of 100 plus pi l to power a half this negative half is same as saying g to power a half times 0 0.2 of 100 2 by 2 out of 100. I'll remove this, I think. I think I can remove it. Yeah, let us remove it. This is, you can now factor out percentage change in time is pi L per half g to per half you factor out pi R per half g to per half 0 0.3 out of 100 plus 0 0.2 out of 100 now it's a map is pi l over g both of them are pi half uh, this is 0 0.5 of 100 you can also write this as change in time is equal to 2 pi l over g and now this one is because now you have factored out a 2 here you can say this is 0 0.25 out of 100 uh, because you now apply this to with 0 0.25 to give us 0 0.5 you can see now change in time is 0 0.25 of 100 of the original time you can say time t increases by 0 0.25 percent so even in this case time is also increasing by 0 0.25 percent